and welcome to New Smyrna Beach, Florida and tonight's inaugural online world series of stock car racing. Both the sprint cars and the SK mods and the very special John Blewett Memorial 76. My name's Tony Stevens, joined alongside tonight by Paul Boswell up here in the booth. And Paul, New Smyrna Speedway. Speed Weeks is always fun, but whenever you get to do it in the virtual world a little bit early, it helps to kind of trigger that urge for race season to get here. That's absolutely right. We've already had a few great nights of racing action across all of the divisions. It's Tonight is the Sprint Car Championship race. Uh, we're going to crown a championship in the Sprint Cars tonight. But like you said, everything leading up to, to this weekend, or this week, the virtual world, and moving on to the real world World Series, this has got me pumped, and I'm excited to have to do some murder in February and uh, do it all over again and, and on the real side of things. Absolutely. Always fun when you get to go to Florida. Any, well, anytime you get to go to Florida, it's fun because you're in Florida, for crying out loud, except when the middle of July when it feels like you're on the surface of the sun. But any other time than that, it's great, especially when it involves racing. And the tradition at New Smyrna for the past 40-some-odd years has been the World Series of Stock Car Racing. And joining us now is Eddie Waltzik, and he's behind this inaugural running of the World Series of Online Stock Car Racing. And I have to ask, Eddie, first off, of course, we sat here and we've talked about it a little bit, but for somebody maybe that's very new to this concept and has lived under a rock for the past 15 or 40 years, what is the World Series of Stock Car Racing, both the physical version and the new virtual version? Well, to be honest with you, before I actually answer that question, I'm going to have to say that uh, Paul Boswell is as much behind the uh, behind this event as, as I am. A uh, funny story about how this actually came about is we were both working on on bringing this event to life in the virtual world and I was working through channels that I had in the in the the racing side of uh, things and he was working through as the the, the GM of uh, Montgomery Motor Speedway at the time he was working through channels that he had and all of a sudden I see a an announcement in the iRacing forums that the online world series of stock car racing is going to happen and I was in the middle of of trying to bring some uh some sponsors to the table for our event and so I messaged Paul and I go what like what are you guys doing we're we're literally in, in the process of trying to do the same thing for week 13 and what uh, what we end up doing was uh, pulling our resources and our efforts uh, to bring this together and, and to, to to make it the event that uh, it's shaping up to be so um, I want to make sure that he gets the the credit that he's due because he's put a ton of work into this and um, actually the approvals that we had to work with directly with uh, New Smyrna uh, Speedway you know came through his uh, his relationship so I want to thank him and uh, to answer your question and move on with the with the show this here the the other interesting part of this is it, this has been going on the, the the this this event has been going on for 46 years and there was three men who got together very similar to our situation with me Paul Miles and and Paul Boswell and Paul Miles for those you who don't know is the uh, owner and operator of the uh, si uh, simulated auto racing association SAR the the uh, co-sanctioned co-promoter of this event um, so we've uh, we've come together to to bring this event to, to everybody but 46 years ago when this event first kicked off um, three partners uh, came together to bring the World Series of Stock Car Racing to New Smyrna Beach you know we all know that uh, this little speedway sits in the shadow of, of uh, Daytona Beach and you know Daytona International Speedway so this uh, the, this entire area has got a real rich history in auto racing and this thing came about because three guys got together and decided they want to put on a great show um, and th that's how the, the, the World Series of uh, Stock Car Auto Racing came about and it's always cool. And we joke all the time in the business that the World Series is one of those deals by night number four where you're putting on crap that is less bent than the junk you took off. That's what kind of racing it tends to be at New Smyrna Beach. But it's always fun to go down there, and it puts on one heck of a show. And a few years ago, they added the Tour Type Modifieds to the, to the program at New Smyrna, and that's always been a really big hit with those guys. A lot of the northern drivers come down, drivers from the NASCAR Wheel and Southern Modified Tour come down and race, and it's always a fun show. And one of their colleagues, John Blewett the Third, it seems like it really just seems like yesterday, Eddie, that uh, he left this world. But kind of tell us a little bit about the John Blewett Memorial 76. And obviously, we have the physical version at New Smyrna now, and this the first incarnation of the virtual version. Yeah, it's uh. It it's a pretty tough deal with uh, the the history behind this. 
um, this event in the way that it came about. Uh, the Blewett family has been a great supporter of uh, you know asphalt short track racing, and they're from New Jersey area. Um, there, John and his uh, brother Jimmy, their grandfather. Um, you know, the, the the family just has a great, rich history of uh, short track racing. And uh, the way that this event came about was uh, there was a there was these guys were racing at an event um, at Thompson Motor Speedway. Um, I think it was oh uh, seven oh eight something like that. Yeah, actually two thousand seven. Um, and uh, the there there was a there was a, a a very mild wreck. It wasn't like the, that uh, the the typical wrecks that you see where you know there was uh, a lot of damage. But uh, what ended up happening was the um, the other cars kind of spun into his driver's door, and the the back side of the the modifieds. If you if you look at these uh, tour modifieds, there there's just not a lot there, and uh, uh, the the rear bumper off uh, another car came through, and uh, you know that's that, that's it came through into the driver's cockpit, and there's a there's a piece uh, of equi- or there's a piece on the chassis now that is mandatory on these uh, modifieds. It's called the Blewett bar, and and that uh, kind of is a you know they have the they have the halo, and you know there's certain safety parts on the, all these cars through the years that uh, have certain drivers' name names on them for you know because they were involved with the, an incident that kind of brought about that safety um, feature and, and with the modifieds, the Blewett bar kind of wraps around the uh, the left uh, the left top side of the driver's uh, head and neck area to keep uh, you know to, to to limit the the things that can kind of come into the driver's area. But when this happened, um, they've been big supporters of of racing down there in the uh, in this event. So I'm I don't remember exactly the the first year that the uh, the memorial race started in New Smyrna, but uh, it's become because of the the history that the Blewett family has in short track racing. It's become a, a pretty special thing to to be in, and uh, this year here, um, Jimmy Blewett, his brother, is uh, shifted all of their the, the entire family shifted their focus to dirt racing. So I'm not even really sure what. Uh, what part they'll play moving forward in the uh, John Blue Memorial Race, but with us doing this first one here, it's something we wanted to do between this and you know the the Richie Evans Memorial that we have coming up on Saturday. Uh, it was something that I felt uh, strongly about last fall. We we did or last summer we did a um, a memorial race that was the Left Turn Memorial 100, and uh, you know I feel pretty strongly about these kind of uh, activities. And it was something I, I really wanted to have on the schedule. So we're we're doing this to you know honor a short track racer who left too soon, who was a great guy, really nice guy, uh, great with his fans, and and just passionate about the sport. And we want to celebrate those kind of things. That we certainly do. It was a great competitor. Well, hey, thanks for joining us. I know you got some work to do. We got sprint car qualifying taking place, and really heat lineups about ready to be posted. So uh, we'll hear back hear back from you in just a little bit. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. That's Eddie Walsick, one of the integral part integ- integral parts. I'll get it out of my mouth here in a second, Paul. But one of the important people around here in the inaugural World Series of online stock car racing. Of course, you yourself, one of them. And what we've got taking place in the track now, and really finishing up, is sprint car qualifying, Paul. And somebody maybe that's not familiar with one of these asphalt style sprint cars. Tell us a little bit about them. Lots of horsepower, a little bit of weight. That's the the biggest thing about these. They're open wheel cars, uh, much like the modified. You know, you don't really want to go beating and banging on each other like you can in a full fendered stock car, like a late model or street stock. Uh, small cars. They only weigh fourteen hundred and seventy five pounds, but they've got eight hundred and twenty horsepower under them. And uh, probably one of the more challenging cars, not only just in in the sim i racing, but also in in real life. I think I would agree. There's a reason the drivers like Jeff Gordon, Ryan Newman, Tony Stewart, and really a host of others have come from this type of race car. You think of even some of the ones that are no longer with us, like a Kenny Irwin, a Jason Leffler, a J.J. Yaley. We saw so many of them at the Chili Bowl in Midgets, a very similar type car. Kyle Larson comes to mind. There's a reason these drivers progress so well as they move up and up and up through the ranks. You have to be able to drive a very, very tricky race car to pilot one of these things quickly. And that big right rear tire doesn't exactly help matters when you're running about 25 inches of stagger on the right rear of one of these things. They are a handful. 
Absolutely. You talk about some of the drivers that have, that have raced it. I mean, you look at guys like Tony Stewart. Um, you know, every chance he gets to go to a local dirt track and run a sprint car race, he does. You know, unfortunately, he had a pretty bad accident at the end of last year. But, uh, you know, even Tony Stewart, he struggles in these things. You know, when it comes down to racing against the guys that race them week in and week out, he can't just show up and do great at them. So, uh, doing, you know, very tough cars to drive. A little bit different beast uh, compared to most stock car stuff. And uh, I'm excited to uh, see what we can, what kind of show they'll put on for us here tonight on ETV. It's always fun anytime you get to watch sprint cars, winged or non-winged. They are a handful, to say the least, and that's one thing that makes them so fun. And unlike a lot of the cars you're going to see this week at New Smyrna, and even the the physical New Smyrna week of Speed Weeks, these cars do not have independent suspension on either end of the race car, Paul. It's a solid axle on both ends. It's driven by radius rods in the front, and of course shocks and springs, but you don't have the traditional control arms you would see on a late model or a modified or whatever the case might be. So it's a very different type of setup, meaning these cars are very driven to the ground. They're very, very quick, but they also can be a real challenge to set up for that reason because sometimes if one axle goes in the air, that means both wheels go in the air, not just that one wheel. And that could be a troubling thing, too, on a racetrack. You definitely uh, want to try to have as much rubber on the asphalt as possible going around this place. That you certainly do. And uh, waiting on heat race lamps to get solidified so we know exactly which ones we're going to be bringing you. Of course, we can't bring you every heat simultaneously here on ETV, but we can bring you as one of the ones that we hand pick. And tonight we're going to pick the ones with the what we call the top split, the fastest qualifiers in that particular heat, trying to give it a shot to work their way into the feature tonight. And that and that's the other thing I love about this type of event, Paul. You have heat races after qualifying. It's not just line them up and go. It's a matter of, okay, you've got your starting spot for a little dash race now, but it doesn't mean anything. You have to actually race your way into the show, and that puts a whole new element on these drivers' shoulders. Absolutely. It, it, not only that, but it's the pressure. You know, you've got to turn a good qualifying lap, get you a good starting heat race, but then you're not locked in yet. You've still got to race your way into the show. You've got to have a good heat race. Um, and, and, you know, even if you're fifth or sixth in your heat, you're going to try to get everything you can because that's going to improve your starting position for the feature as well. Well, while we get everything all settled out, we're going to take a quick break here on ETV. You're watching the inaugural online World Series of Stock Car Racing. We'll be back with Sprint Car Heat Racing in just a couple of moments. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to New Smyrna Speedway here in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Of course, qualifying, just finishing up for sprint car racing here tonight. 
in the inaugural World Series of Stock Car Racing. And Paul Boswell now trying to catch up with uh, our fast qualifier from Sprint Car Time Trials just a little bit ago. And Paul, looking at the sheet, uh, looks like it's going to be a pretty competitive night here tonight. And really, uh, this being the finale of the week, there are some points implications coming into this night to determine who exactly does and doesn't have a shot at that overall title. That's absolutely right. These guys have run uh, two races already this week. Uh, Monday night, Fred Lampella took a win in 25 lapper. Tuesday night was Vinny Sansone leading all 50 laps. That was last night. Great race in action. But in the point standing, it's Vinny Sansone, 120 points out in front. Nathan Saxon, second in points, 28 points back. Now, that's a pretty sizable margin. So for Vinny, if he just keeps himself clean and out of trouble and gets a good solid finish, he should be able to wrap this thing up. But it's short track racing. It's sprint car racing. Anything can happen. Uh, Brandon Butchberger sits third in points right now, 32 behind Vinny. Uh, Ryan Borges is fourth in points, 36 points back. TJ Graves, 44 points back in fifth. And really and truly, realistically, if unless something happens to Vinny, he's got a pretty good stronghold on it. If something does happen to him, any one of those other four guys could jump up there and take the home, the inaugural uh, Sprint Car Championship in the online World Series of Stock Car Racing. Very well could. It is official, it appears. Vinny Sansone is going to be listed as the fast qualifier in the Sprint Car session here tonight. While the lineups get... Uh, exactly lined up right now, Paul. We'll see if we can get everything, get something down there so we can talk to him at the moment. Of course, officials thrashing at the moment to try to get the uh, heat race lineup set, but Paul, looks like maybe you've got a line to Vinny Sansone to get his thoughts on his fast time run here tonight. Vinny Sansone, fast qualifier tonight after uh, a dominating performance last night leading all 50 laps. You're the points leader, Vinny. You're a uh, fast qualifier tonight. How's the car feel, and, and uh, how about that lap? A, a 4.09, pretty good time. Yeah, it's um, a yeah, pretty solid lap. I mean, I know you can do uh, low threes and some twos here, but, uh, you know, that qualifying, you get two laps. Uh, trying to make those count gets kind of nerve-wracking, but uh, it's setup's pretty solid. Uh, it's been race-proven, so I feel pretty comfortable with it, and... Uh, just being able to hang on for the 75 laps in the A main later on, I believe it'll work well also. Have you made any changes to the car since last night? No, I finally got it um, driving pretty easy for me. Uh, so I'm not going to, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I've learned my lesson throughout <laughs> previous races trying to do that. So I'm going to leave this one go and, and just ride it out. So we've got heat races coming up and then the feature, a long night of racing. Uh, tell us about the championship implications. You uh, have a pretty good uh, margin in front of Nathan Saxon. Uh, what's what's your strategy to try to hold on to that? Uh, well, for, yeah, first strategy, just not the wreck. <laughs> it's uh, been attrition with a couple of the cars and series uh, with the sprint championship. Um, it kind of starts off just uh, having everybody show up all the nights. So we got a little bit of a cushion there, but the uh, uh, competition is still going to be pretty stiff. Uh, Nathan, definitely no stranger to being fast. So I'll, I'll expect him to be up there, and as long as long as I keep him in my sights, I, I'll I'll be happy. I hear you there. Well, we appreciate you stopping by. Appreciate you taking that minute to uh, talk with us. We'll let you go ahead and get things ready to take the. Uh, to take to the heat races here in just a moment. That's Vinny Sansone, fast qualifier tonight for the sprint cars. So it sounds like Vinny is going to have a fun night ahead of him trying to hold on to that point lead. And, and, and Paul, obviously you talk about points and how 28 points is a pretty substantial margin here during the World Chain or World Online. Yeah, I'll get it right. I'll get it right here in a second. The World Series of Stock Car Racing. There we go. I got the tongue twister out. But tell us exactly kind of how the points work. I mean, 28 points is relative if you get 100 per position. So what exactly is the scenario to gain or lose points here? Well, the winner of the race gets 50 points. Uh, there's no bonuses for leading laps, anything like that. Second place gets 46 points. Then they drop by two points per position after that. Um, so to, to lose 28 points is going to be pretty significant. The... Um, also, in addition to that, the bonus points come from qualifying. So Vinny, being fast qualifier, has already earned himself five bonus points. Um, that's gonna that could play to be a huge factor as well moving on uh, through the night. 
Yeah, certainly will. Of course, warm-ups going on right now before heat races. A little bit of last-minute time before you get on the racetrack. Good to see Frank Ferry Jr. on the racetrack, the driver out of Ohio, sporting some sponsorship from Anderson Speedway. And I'm so used to seeing Anderson Speedway where I'm from in Charlotte. It means South Carolina, but he means that uh, high bank quarter mile up in Indiana. And that's a fun place to watch some of these cars. It's uh, about half the size of this racetrack, Paul. And it is one of the most action-packed racetracks anywhere in the country. To watch the little 500 with these cars, yes, 500 laps around a quarter mile is something to see. And it's something I think everybody needs to put on their bucket list. That's definitely one of the races I want to get to. It's on my bucket list. That and the Chili Bowl. I, I've, I've for years wanted to go to the Chili Bowl and haven't been able to go there. And and uh, it's just exciting stuff. You get these sprint cars and midgets out there on these little bitty race tracks, whether it be asphalt or dirt, it don't really matter. But uh, these these cars put on a great show. They certainly do, and of course, more cars coming into the racetrack at the time being. Well, let everybody know, of course, again, we're here at New Smyrna Speedway tonight. And to give you a little bit of background about New Smyrna Speedway, obviously, the physical World, World Series of Stock Car Racing is coming up here in the next couple of weeks, starting in February, and kind of parallel speed weeks at Daytona. Uh, you get done at the big track, and a lot of people will head down the road to the half mile at New Smyrna. You'll be surprised the personalities you'll see there. But New Smyrna is one of these places that if you can win at New Smyrna Speedway, you can win anywhere in the United States, says Richie Evans. And Richie Evans, you might know, one of the great modified racers in his time. New Smyrna, the high-banked half-mile you see here on iRacing tonight, is only five miles west of the actual town in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, and is known by many as the world center of racing, at least short track racing. New Smyrna Speedway has been home to some of the finest stock car racing in the entire country now. For more than 45 years, particularly every Feb every February. For more information on the World Series of Stock Car Racing, go online, check them out. Tickets still available for every night of action, including the NASCAR k and Pro Series, as well as all the tour-type mods, the sprint cars, the late models, you name it, at www.newsmyrnaspeedway.org. That's where you can find all the information coming up about the World Series of Stock Car Racing, Paul. Pretty good uh, pre-entry list starting to build up for that event as well, the uh, Real World Series. And uh, I know of a lot of uh, hot shoes from the Southeastern Super Late Model and Pro Late Model ranks that I'm familiar with are headed down there, uh, Spencer Davis being one of them. I've heard a little bit about Bubba Pollard being uh, heading down there to try to go after the uh, World Series championship. So pretty interesting stuff. I'm excited uh, uh, to be able to go down there this year, and, and I'm looking forward to it. And uh, like like you said, tickets still available. Don't waste don't waste any time. It's going to be well worth the money. It really is. And it seems like so much stuff happens at New Smyrna early in the year, and it really does, but there's a reason for that. It's warm in Florida. It's that simple. They don't really have much of an off-season down there. It's called Thanksgiving and Christmas, and that's really about it. And they fire right back up. They just had the red eye a few weeks ago, uh, and now and the Pedor Memorial. So things are already heating up down there. They're in full swing, and the World Series is just – pretty much the opening act for the year as they like to stay racing more or less around the calendar as everything continues down in Florida. More cars pouring into the speedway here and onto the racetrack for their warm-up session. Currently fastest on the board in this particular group for this heat race is TJ Graves with Frank Ferry, Leela Wilson, Chris Overland, and Daniel Muse, the top five. Of course, sure, sure as we say that now, a little bit of a shuffling. Muse jumps to third on the board, but... This entire field is only separated by a couple of tenths of a second, Paul. Very, very tight field in qualifying. And even with guys, you know, you got Vinny Sansone we talked to a while ago was a fast qualifier, and he turned a great lap, but just right behind him are these other guys. I mean, it's a really tight field. The whole field within uh, less than a couple tenths of a second for this heat race. So should be pretty exciting. Just a quick 25 lapper. And uh, I'm ex I can't wait. I'm getting excited now. I'm starting to get antsy, ready to throw the, the green flag on a first race of the night. And, uh, excitement's starting to build a little bit, Tony. Certainly is starting to be. I always love coming down here to see these races and these sprint cars. You, you really look at them, and you're hitting, what, 140 miles an hour or so at the end of the straightaway in one of these cars in a half-mile racetrack. That is just hauling the mail i don't care what size racetrack you're on but to take one of these what is it 1400 pound machines and go sailing off into a corner at 140 miles an hour it takes something pretty special behind the wheel and uh 
more like under the wheel for that matter if you get where I'm going at, Paul. Yeah, and not only that, but with these being the wingless sprint cars, uh, you know, asphalt sprint cars, these guys are wheeling it all the way around. Those wing sprint cars, now, they're pretty darn fast, and, and they're not necessarily easy to drive, but that big wing putting all that downforce down, uh, I know when they visit Five Flags Speedway uh, once a year uh, here in Pensacola, they, they're able to hold it just about flat out around that place, and it's a half mile. Uh, but these guys tonight in the uh, wingless sprint cars, are, they're really having to work both feet. They're working the, the steering wheel and, and they're working their nerves quite a bit uh, just to hold on to these things. Yeah, like we said these cars very heavy on rear stagger they don't there's not a lot of geometry to really jack force to the front tires and really as small as the front tires are for a car that was born in dirt racing years and years ago you had to use the back tires to turn it and it just sort of morphed its way into pavement and these cars now use three four five inches of rear stagger to turn the car and you're very, very heavily dependent on the right rear tire, and you know what that means. That's the corner of danger. The more you overload that corner, the more of a handful you're going to have behind the wheel, and it certainly does play out here on the racetrack. Speaking of wing sprint cars in Florida, Paul, uh, the, T -Bay, the TBARA, the Tampa Bay Area Racing Association, just made a big switch in this region. They do a lot of the wing sprint car racing in Florida. Uh, they just made a big tire switch to the American Racer tires much like the must-see racing sprint cars run. So uh, that's going to be really cool to see how many of those guys maybe go run a couple of those must-see races that say Mobile and Five Flags when the must-see tour comes around this year. That would be a good thing for those tracks if they can get a couple of them TBARA guys to come on up and uh, you know maybe play spoiler to the must-see regulars. Uh, could be pretty interesting. They can almost make it like a uh, uh, Civil War type deal going on. That would be pretty neat there in, uh, on the Gulf Coast. Really would. It's always fun to watch those guys. I got to see them at Southern National Motorsports Park a few weeks, well, a few weeks ago. It was November. It's been a couple months now. Uh, that was the last time I saw them. The previous time to that, it was uh, at Bristol Motor Speedway. And let's just say a wing sprint car doing 170 miles an hour or so around a half mile is absolutely mind-numbing. I think the world record was set that day at like 12.73 seconds to get around a half-mile racetrack. Uh, you can't blink that fast at Bristol. That is absolutely just hauling, to say the least. Speaking of hauling, well, cars have been hauled out onto the pit lane, and a couple more still yet to be pushed into position, but 12 or so cars set to take the green flag in this, the quickest split of the heat races, 25 laps the distance here tonight, Paul, and this will help determine who starts where in the feature a little bit later here tonight. That's right. Let's go over the starting lineup on the front row. In the number 80 is Vinny Sansone. He was fast qualifier and current points leader for the sprint cars. Uh, T.J. Graves in the number 22 car on the outside of the front row. Frank Ferry Jr. rolls that Anderson Speedway sponsor number 97 from the third spot. And Daniel Muse in the Hooters machine who roll off in fourth. Brandon Butchberger, number 20, on the inside of row three alongside Layla Wilson in the 74. Colin Penn pilots the 52 machine. He'll start on the inside of row number eight. And Joe Annunziata in the 96 machine. That's a black and red car. He'll start eighth. Starting ninth, Ryan Borges in the 24. He's in the top five in points, starting a little bit deep in this heat race. Outside of him, starting 10th, the 93 of Kyle Young. Former NASCAR Dash Series winner and actually a modified competitor at Bowman Gray Stadium, Zach Brewer. Rolls off in the last row of this one. Problems on his qualifying lap. He'll start 11th. And Chris Overland did not register a time trial effort. No time for Overland. He will have to come from the back in car number 47, the black and orange special at the tail of the field. Second of two pace laps finishing here at New Smyrna. The lights atop. The first racing Ford Mustang pace car have now been extinguished. He'll make the hard left-hand turn off of turn number four. Vinny Sansone, TJ Gray is going to lead him down. And very quickly, Sansone on the gas. He'll jump out to that early lead but behind him. They are all over the racetrack for third on back. Good jump for Sansone on the initial start. He'll lead down the backstretch into turn number three. Vinny Sansone off to the races early on in this 25-lap heat. TJ Gray. Graves is trying to follow best he can, but Sansone already out to what amounts to about a three-quarter of a second lead or almost an entire full corner here at New Smyrna Speedway. 
Note for Colin Penn fans, he's already coming to pit road. So problems with the 52 machine. Looks like he will call it a night early here in this heat race. Graves runs second. The battle behind him is for third. The 97 of Frank Perry Jr. just took it. And here comes Daniel Muse trying to hold on. Brandon Buchberger down on the bottom, making some headway, as is the 74 of Larry Wilson. Great battle from third back to sixth, and even seventh starting to close in on that battle as well. Look at that 20 of Brandon Bookberger in fourth, trying to hold on to that spot over the five of Daniel Muse. Side by side oh, behind him. Trump. Lil Wilson goes around contact in turn number three. Wilson and Borges got into it. No contact with the wall, it didn't appear. Maybe very slight contact with the number 74 with the outside wall, but it was in fact minor. And that will bring out the first caution of the night. Those two just simply hooking wheels, getting into turn one, it looked like, Paul. Yeah, good side-by-side -side battle. Looks like they just ran out of room there a little bit, bringing out the first caution of the night. Uh, these guys ran uh, the sprint cars on Monday night. We only had two cautions in a 25-lap uh, feature. So uh, good, clean racing with these sprint cars. Hard to see or tough to see one this early, but uh, still a long way to go in this heat race. Vinny Sansone has showed so far he's a class of the field. Tough break, though, for Layla Wilson. Makes you wonder, though, how much Vinny Sansone, A, is really showing. Is he going out and making a mock run for the feature later tonight? Because obviously I think his confidence says, I'm good enough to go out here and win this race, so I'm going to try something in this heat race and see what it does. Is this a test session for him? And for that matter, is everybody behind him just kind of biding their time? I mean, there's only 12 cars in this race, so everybody's pretty much guaranteed a starting spot in the 75-lap feature a little bit later tonight. So how much... Are the mind games playing at this point? Yeah, there's no doubt Vinny could be uh, kind of trying some things and, and maybe just playing around with a little bit. But I really think Vinny's strategy tonight, knowing where he sits in the points and knowing he just needs to stay out of trouble, if I was in his shoes, I would get out front and run as hard as I could and stay out front and just avoid all the issues behind him. Well, so far it looks like exactly what he's been doing. He pulled out to about a second and a half lead there or so. In the first five laps, I mean, nobody has had anything for that 80 car so far tonight. And, you know, on the flip side of that, you look at TJ Graves and Frank Ferry. I think they are still very competitive, but they're they're missing something to get to Vinny Sansone. And we talked about how difficult these cars are to drive. It's, it's really hard to get the feel of one of these sprint cars because to be fast, you have to be comfortable being out of control pretty much. Well, you know, there's an old saying, I, th I think it was Mario Andretti that said that if you feel like you're in control, you're not going fast enough, and never is that more true than in a sprint car. Uh, these things, are, you are always on the edge of your seat driving in one of these things, and uh, I think that's where Vinny and TJ and these, these fast guys really excel, is they feel comfortable being uncomfortably out of control. And really, I think that's true for about any race car driver, but it really hits home when you're in one of these sprint cars as the lights are out atop the pace car, meaning we'll be going back racing here in about a quarter mile or so, a half a lap away from the green flag flying once again. Uh, yeah, comfort is usually not fast, and fast is usually not comfortable. It's 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 a absolute proportional relationship between the two. There's no doubt about that. Pace car is off. Once again, Sansone hard on the gas, and we'll be Beating the field into turn number one. Graves tries to hold on to his back to the cell guard, but nothing there. And in fact, it's a huge gap from those two all the way back to that battle for third place. That's what Brandon Bootberger has it right now. He's just taken over that third spot from Frank Ferry Jr. as Ferry trying to hold off the 47 this year, Chris Overland, who started shotgun on the field. Yeah, Bootberger had a great restart right then, crossed over, got underneath. Frank Ferry Jr. was able to take that third spot. Now these guys are, are kind of stretching out single file a little bit. We'll see who can jockey for a little bit of position. Or like you said, these guys might just try to ride and save their stuff for the feature. Behind Chris Overland, Joe Nunziata has got a little bit of a run on that 47 machine. At least he did a corner or so ago, but the 96 got out from underneath of its driver. And now Overland is starting to put the heat on the five of Daniel Muse. That's for the fifth spot as they work off turn number two. Overland sideways. Still right there in the back of the Hooter mobile. There goes Muse sliding up the hill through three and four. Overland gets under him. Overland going to take the fifth spot. So from the back of the pack up to the top five now for Chris Overland. Good start early on as we complete 13 laps of 25 in this first heat race. 
And for Chris Overland, every car he passes in this heat race is really two cars he doesn't have to pass later. Speaking of passing, change for second. Buchberger by TJ Graves, or at least alongside of him now, as they race down the back straightaway. Buchberger trying to make his presence felt at the front of the field. And there he is. He'll clear the 22 machine as they work off turn number four, Paul. Buchberger having a great run since the restart. Second through sixth, you can throw a blanket over. Buchberger has it. Graves is third. Frank Ferry Jr. in fourth. Chris Overland has closed in on him. Running in fifth. But out in front, Vinny Sansone's opened up over a three-second advantage over these guys. Yeah, Sansone is gone. He's somewhere in Daytona right now taking in the babes and the bikes. That's all there is to his night because he is checked out. The battle, though, is for the runner-up spot. Buchberger has it. Now Graves gives up third. Now Graves will spin it. Off turn number four, he'll lock it down and keep it away from the inside wall. But the Food City sponsor machine, the 22 and TJ Graves, major issue off turn number four. That'll pretty much relegate him to the tail of the field. But Brandon Buchberger is not scot-free yet, Paul. He's got Chris Overland to deal with. And if the opening 19 laps or 18 laps of this one had been any indication, Chris Overland is very, very quick and might have a shot at the second spot. No doubt about it. Bootberger's been quick, but Overland from the back of the pack has now worked his way to third. And matter of fact, he was passing Vinny Sansone for third when Vinny lost control just a minute ago. So uh, Chris Overland may be the fastest. I don't know if he's faster than Vinny. Second fastest race car on the track right now. Certainly quick, and the thing I noticed between these two drivers, look at the different lines they're running. You see the 20 car of Buchberger right down as close as he can get that yellow line, usually. And of course I say that, now he slides at the racetrack, but Overland using much more of the racetrack, making it a much larger corner, diamonding it, using the higher banking to his advantage, and right now it's working for him. He's closed within a car length of Buchberger in turn one. Especially through turns one and two, you can move up the track about a half a groove and use that extra banking coming off of two to get a great run. But I think what Overland's strategy is, running a little bit higher line, he's trying to keep the momentum up, try to keep the thing wound up. Uh, and so far, it seems to be working. Now he's worked his way from the back of the pack to third, and he's all over that 20 of Bootburger for second. He's only got about a mile to figure it out. Two laps to go this time. Vinny Sansone has already taken the white flag. He is gone. He's five seconds ahead of this battle for the runner-up spot. Buchberger has it. Chris Overlin wants it. They work out at turn number two. Two car lengths to the gap down the back straightaway. Still close battle. Overlin trying to close in on Buchberger. Coming around to take the white flag. One more lap remains for Vinny Sansone way out in front. The battle is for second. The battle for second. Meanwhile, Sansone, he'll take the checkered flag. That's of little concern for the moment. This one doesn't pay much at all, but starting positions. Buchberger will end up in second. Chris Oberlin will finish third. And Frank Ferry Jr. will roll home in fourth with Daniel Muse, the Hooters sponsor machine, in the fifth spot. Wilson Annunziata, Young, Graves, and Brewer finish out the top five. That was the rest of the field running on the speedway at the checkered flag. Ryan Borges and Colin Penn both retired early out of this one, Paul. Well, I really didn't anticipate uh, as dominating a performance as we just saw out of Vinny Sansone in the heat race, but uh, I think he's, I don't think he was holding anything back. Uh, we, we had questioned that early on, but he has done a great job winning by 5.7 seconds over Brandon Buchberger. Well, we'll talk once again to Vinny Sansone and the winner of heat race number two and get everything set and ready to roll for our 75 lap feature coming up just a little bit later. Don't go away. You're watching ETV's live coverage of the inaugural online World Series of Stock Car Racing at New Smyrna Beach Speedway. We'll be right back. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. Listeners where you could hear everything from big 80s metal to classic rock and roll country. 
Radio, ETV Live, Sports Radio, even a call and unplugged. Rock and roll. HDRadioNetwork.com, one of the fastest growing internet radio networks. HDRadioNetwork.com, take it with you, cowboy. Get the mobile app for Android, iPhone, iPad, and all the rest from TuneIn.com. Welcome back to New Smyrna Beach, Florida, and ETV's coverage of the World Series of Stock Car Racing. Sprint Car Heat Races are done! Lineups being set, and we're just moments away from taking the green flag on our 75-lap Sprint Car feature here tonight. And, Paul, we watched Vinny Sansone just dominate his heat race, uh, but Fred Lampella took off the victory in his as well. And pretty much everybody that showed up at the track tonight gets to race, I think, with one exception. So uh, that always proves it's best to show up and try to run the race. Absolutely. So while Vinny Sansone was putting on a clinic, Fred Lampella uh, managed to hold off Nathan Saxon in a close race in the second heat. And uh, But we've got Vinny Sansone right here with us. Vinny, we just talked to you a while ago, fast qualifier. Uh, it, Tony was joking around uh, in that first couple laps before the first yellow that maybe you were just holding back and playing with these guys, but uh, I don't think you were holding anything back with that heat. No, just wanted to, yeah, always going hard every lap. <laughs> Keep yourself sharp. Uh, definitely can't take anything for granted. Well, uh, you know, go out there and win by over five seconds in the heat race. Uh, so is that is that all your cards? Is that is that what you've got? You've showed these guys everything you've got. Yeah, it's um, it is a, it's a pretty tricky place though. I mean, once you get to racing, uh, I know they were kind of battling back there in the second, third, fourth spots. So, uh, I mean, you lose a lot of time that way. So, but five seconds is kind of deceiving in in that regard. But uh, will definitely be pretty good for the for the A main. What's the tire wear going to be like? It's the longest race of the week uh, that you've done so far. So, what uh, what's the tire wear going to look like, and how's the car going to act after 75 laps are on it? Yeah, that's um, a little bit of an unknown. Uh, a lot of the guys here are used to the 50 lap main events. Uh, so going an extra 25, you. Maybe you have to take it a little bit easier at the start. Uh, definitely going to have a little bit more fuel on hand, so uh, might be a good opportunity early to, to get some people if you can or uh, or try and run away. <laughs> and uh, you know, I guess we'll be up front here for the start, so uh, my strategy would definitely be on the saving side, trying to keep all four tires under the car so we're around at the end. Well, there he is, Vinny Sansone. Vinny, we'll let you get going, strap back into the car, get ready for the feature. Uh, Vinny Sansone, fast qualifier and fast heat winner uh, here tonight so far for the first annual online World Series of Stock Car Racing Sprint Car Championship night. Thanks, Paul. And tonight's, sp uh, tonight's uh, Sprint Car Heat Race winner interviews are brought to you by Double Clutch, providing multi-platform cross-vertical fan engagement solutions for motorsports stakeholders. If you're in the marketing industry, you understand exactly what we just said. The Double Clutch Engage program creates opportunities for interesting and, most importantly, profitable fan engagement. Teams and drivers will enjoy an increased influence and in making it more rewarding to be a fan. Double Clutch helps you win on Monday after drivers win on Sunday and Saturday night. For more information, go to winonmonday.com. Also brought to you by the SARA. This summer, the Sim Auto Racing Association brings you one of the biggest super late model races in America, right to iRacing. Coming in June, the legendary 
TD Bank Oxford 250. Visit SR, visit the SARA at semiautoracingassociation.com. Short track racing is back. The SARA returns next week, boasting six divisions, including street stocks, legends cars, tour modifieds, late models, and two brand new divisions, the k and Pro Series car and the long, long-awaited super late model. Again, check them out at simautoracingassociation.com. Well, we've caught up with Fred Lampella as well. And Fred, while your heat race was not televised, that might have taken a little bit of pressure off of you, but certainly the results look like it was a close one. How in the world did you end up on the top step of the podium and with the preferred spot coming into tonight's feature? Oh, uh, well, I got, uh, I didn't quite do what I wanted to in the queue, but uh, uh, got to start on the pole and die in this heat and uh, had some pretty clear sailing out there, so it wasn't. Uh, too uh, too hazardous at all. We saw it from a couple drivers in the top split heat race. Qualifying, not their forte. They were able to drive through the field and work their way up in the top two or three spots. How hard or how easy is it to pass cars with a sprint car here at New Smyrna? Uh, I guess it depends on your level of experience. I know Vinny and PJ, they're really good at carving through traffic. I still, I still need to get some work done on that, but as um, long as you're not, uh, if you're nice and smooth, and and uh, the you know the car you're trying to get around is predictable, uh, usually it goes okay. Now, obviously, 25 lap heat race much different from a 75 lap feature, Fred. What have you got in store for us for the 75 lap feature? Well, I don't know. I'm gonna try and stay out of trouble and see if I can finish this race. Um, 75 is a little longer than we usually run here. Um, We'll have to see if some cautions uh, come into play a little bit. 75, you, there may, I don't know if we'll see anybody going into the pits and getting tires or what happens. I guess it depends on how the cautions play out, but it'll be interesting. It certainly will be, Fred. Nonetheless, it's going to be fun to watch. Best of luck to you. Thank you. That's Fred Lampella. He is the winner of heat race number two, Paul. And uh, it sounds like it's going to be a fun race to try to watch tonight to see the cumbers and goers, maybe not up front, but through the field. And, you know, maybe depending how the race falls, we could see a little bit of pit strategy come into it as well. That'll be something interesting first car race. Uh, you know, a lot of times the sprint cars run shorter races where pitting's really not an option. So uh, for these guys to be, uh, for these guys to be, have a longer race or maybe pit strategy can play a role uh, may be interesting and, and who knows we might see somebody try something crazy on pit strategy and, and improve their finish if not contend for a win so things all getting sorted out here at new smyrna beach florida and uh looks like it's about time for some of our pre-race festivities to believe the cactus cuties are down track side and they will be performing our national anthem <laughs> 